powered by the Montana Television Network. The 10 o'clock news continues on Q2, Montana's news leader. Marine Sergeant Trevor Johnson loved his country, but he loved his family more than anything in the world. Trevor gave his life for this country, and in the years since his death, his wife Nikki has done everything she can to make sure their children never forget the father they barely knew. Q2's Brandon Sullivan brings us their story this Father's Day as we pay tribute to a dad and a hero. How do we define our heroes? As children, we found many of our heroes on the field. And the 3 2 pitch. Swung on a drill to right field. Going back, Sanders. On the track. At the wall. See ya! But as we grow, it becomes clear that some of the true heroes in our life are the ones who put a roof over our head, take us to practice, and put us to bed our mothers and our fathers. But what if that father was also a hero to an entire community, but you'd never had the chance to know him? Or maybe all you have are faded memories. How then do you define your hero? The first thing that drew me to him was his smile. He had this amazing smile and I saw him across the room. I was like, that guy is the most gorgeous guy in here. And he just lit up the room. We sat in the Mexican restaurant until it closed. Then we sat in his truck until a security guard asked us to leave. And then we went back to his place and we just stayed up and talked all night long. And we had breakfast the next morning and just stayed together till the very next night. And from that moment on, we were inseparable. He came home one day and he said, I can't wait another day without you being my wife. And so we went in the next day, we went to the courthouse, and we had two of our close friends come be our witnesses, and we got married. And truly the thing that attracted me to him was his smile, his energy, his goodness, his confidence, his caring heart. He never put anyone else before himself. Anything he asked you to do, he would do himself. He was honestly like the most incredible person I've ever met in my life. Trevor Johnson was a fifth generation Montanan grew up on a ranch south of Forsyth near Colstrip, Montana. He joined the Marines at age 17, and by the time he was 20, had been promoted to sergeant. He was an engineer with the 2nd Combat Engineer Battalion when he was deployed for a third time in 2009. By this time, he and Nikki had two children, Landon age three and Aspen eight months. In a phone call with his wife on Sunday, January 25th, he heard his daughter say Dada for the first time. Two days later, Nikki was home with the kids when she got a knock at the door. I go to the door and there's five men in uniform. They say, Miss Johnson. I say, yes. And he's like, I'm Lieutenant Posh. May I please come in? And I said, no, you cannot come in. You need to please tell me what happened to my husband. And he looked at me and he said, Miss Johnson, we're sorry to tell you that Sergeant Johnson was killed today. I kept thinking, I just talked to him. I just talked to him. It was, it was his third deployment, and he had been in situations where he should have died, like being stranded in the mountains in Afghanistan, in a helicopter crash in a mountain in Hawaii, like crazy things. But that was our last conversation. Trevor was killed in Afghanistan, leading a foot patrol charged with clearing explosive devices. He was 23. Less than a month later, he was buried at Arlington National Cemetery with full military honors, awarded the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star with Valor. As the children have gotten older, their mother strives to keep the memory and legacy of Trevor alive for them to see and feel. In 2015, Nikki, along with Trevor's parents, Tom and Colleen, started Fob Johnson, a nonprofit free of cost retreat for veterans of the War on Terror with what we're doing now with Bob Johnson. We're helping the veterans, all the veterans we help, the ones that we host, the kids kind of latch on to them. When these men and women come and they recognize what he did and who he is, they express to the children how important he is and what a hero he is. And through the work that we do, I feel like they carry a piece of Trevor with them that we were kind of lacking. A day before what would have been Trevor's 24th birthday, a memorial service was held at the family ranch just outside Colstrip. Over 600 people attended. It was the last time Nikki and the children had been in his hometown. Now, more than seven years later, 
As they make their way to Arlington to visit their dad for Father's Day, they have returned, giving Landon and Aspen a chance to see just how their father is remembered. Yeah. <laughs> and every year, the veteran players come back and they talk to the new players about the significance of this and how important Trevor was to the, to the program, to baseball in this community. Every year, the new kids are learning about your dad, every year. Russ Davidson was one of Trevor's high school teachers. He recounted having their dad in class on September 11th, 2001. I could read it on Trevor's face. It was a combination, I guess determination would be one word, I would say, uh, anger. I mean, I knew at that moment that he was military. I mean, at that moment, there was no doubt in my mind that I didn't know what branch he was going to go into, but there was no doubt in my mind that he was going to uh, answer that in some way. John Ray, Trevor's classmate, brought a scrapbook of newspaper clippings from Trevor's passing, much of which Nikki and the kids had never seen. It's so beautiful. There's so much work in this. Yeah, my mom uh, actually made that for me and I felt that it was probably proper that you guys would get it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. This is a part of him like I heard about from him but I never got to experience. So here we are eight and a half years later and these people have still not forgotten so humbling and I look at these amazing individuals that just embrace us and a lot of them I've, I've never met before and they just embrace us because of who he was and because we are his family they just care and they love us and they accept us and they honor him I feel I feel unlucky but fortunate at the same time because like I'm lucky that he lost him but I'm fortunate that like I like such like a brave like father and, and, and like how like people like like appreciate what he's done. I feel sad because he's gone, but I feel happy because I'm I'm tracing his steps. Landon and Aspen retraced their father's steps through the halls of his high school and on the base paths of the very field he played on as a kid. The field that now bears his name. If I only had a couple of words to say to him and I only had a couple of minutes. I want to say I love you and I really m wish you could come back. They long for their father's presence. And if it not for their mom and countless others keeping his memory alive, they may have been lost. Nikki could have given in to the overwhelming sadness and depression of losing the love of her life and the father of her children. But instead chooses every day to soldier on. And through her strength, Landon and Aspen will forever know the definition of a real American hero. Brandon Sullivan, MTN News. And Brandon tells us that today the kids uh, spent Father's Day with their dad at Arlington National Cemetery. Then the family will continue its journey meeting veterans in each state as they travel more than 7,000 miles cross country a number that represents more than 7,000 men and women who have given their lives in the ongoing war on terror.